Ooh, 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 oh, oh, ah, ah. Hey guys, all right. Good morning. It's been a little while since the last stream. I think, as you guys know, for obvious reasons, obviously I was out of the country for a little while. Uh, let's see, a good amount of people, it looks like, already hanging out. You guys ready to watch some Dugram build here over on Twitch? Uh, Striker, Evocatus, I don't know how I was meant to pronounce that. Uh, clockwork, Archangel, hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, and then on YouTube, I see Adam's here. Adam, good morning, or evening there. Speedball, Haro, Ariano, Brian, Jeremy, Wayne. Uh, Kalinuk, not sure how to pronounce that. Kalinuk, is that right? John, hey, how's it going, John? Ah, ugh. Hang on. Uh, wait a minute, I need some ice. All the ice is already melted out of my iced coffee and it's too warm already. So, uh, Kaylin, uh, Justin, what type of kit is this? This is from Dugram, uh, a different series, which I'm not really too familiar with at all. <laughs> really, I'm not familiar with it at all, I should say. Um, but a, si a different sort of series, sort of similar to like Votoms or something like that. Uh, so there's a few different kits that are available, although I'm not sure how much they're like in production or something, because uh, they seem to like come and go in terms of their availability. Availability, I've seen them uh, a lot at times, and then not really a lot for a while. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, I've never really been too like into the designs, but this one I think is pretty cool looking, probably just because of the the black color looks good on it and then it has the big cannons on the backpack so it looks pretty cool so I wanted to give it a try as you guys know I like to uh, try out some different stuff every now and then so we're gonna build this up and see what it's like and yeah I'll let you guys know but it should be pretty cool just getting all the parts right and everything I mean it seems pretty straightforward it's not gonna be anything too too different you know it's not going to be exactly like building a master grade or something like that but Relatively similar, at least. Uh, all right. Uh, Sean, hey, what's up, man? Uh, let's see. Label. All right. So as we get into it, guys, just as as always, if you guys have questions for me about the build or just about whatever, if you guys have a question that you would like me to see, make sure that you just uh, tag me in your comment or post there. Tag me and or uh, put your question in all caps so that I can pick it out in the chat easily enough. So thank you for that. Patrick, how's it going, buddy? Uh, David, uh, Patrick, I don't know when exactly uh, USA Gundam Store is due to get the FAS, but I can tell you that the FAS doesn't release in Japan until the 15th. So it's going to be at least probably around the end of the month, I would imagine. Uh, just after Valentine's Day. So that'll be a good day after Valentine's Day present. Um, all right, so we're going to just follow the manual here because normally I would like to build like the torso first, but the head like kind of fits into the torso. So we'll build the head first. We'll just follow along with the manual. Uh, all right, uh, and there's a few different options. So this is going to be another kit where I'll have the unboxing and the review all as one video. So you guys have not seen the unboxing for this yet, but uh, in that you'll see the different options for the canopy. But I'll just show them to you now as well too. So for the canopy, basically you have three different options. Uh, there's a lot of little parts here for the head. 
Uh, so the options for the canopy one is just uh, one solid piece, and then another one is uh, one piece with a separate piece for like a hatch, like door that'll open on the top. And then another one is the exact same as that. It's two pieces, uh, a main piece and an open hatch piece, but it's got pre-painting on it. So it's already got like all the, the edge of the uh, canopy is all like already pre-painted, but the nub marks on it are kind of visible. So it's a pretty good alternative in that you, you know, painting the lines around the canopy is sometimes kind of tricky. So it's nice that it's pre-painted, but it does have visible nub marks on it. So it's not perfect. Uh, Joseph, hello from Indonesia. Hello, Indonesia. Hello from Texas. I'm new to Gundam and I was wondering what HG kits should I get? Mm. <laughs> HG is the... Uh, most diverse line in Gundam, so it's really hard to answer. I would say if you could narrow it down to a specific series or something, that'd be easier to answer. Or like if, say, for example, you're a big Iron Blood Orphans fan, if you ask like what's like a good HG Iron Blood Orphans kit to get or something, that'd be easier. But just HG in general is just a little bit too wide open to be able to give you any sort of good answer for that. Uh, so the very f the very first step is the pilot here in his chair and it tells you in the manual that you're meant to glue meant to use a little bit of glue to stick the pilot into the chair which will not do at this time I, th I think I should be able to just leave that out for the moment and then be able to put it in later um, all right let's see uh, Clockwork Archangel on uh, on Twitch there. I don't know if you're still watching or not, but if your screen is just a loading screen, then just try re refreshing the page and it sh should work. Uh, all right. Uh, if As for you guys' commenting about which whether you should start with HG or MG, uh, starting with an HG is, is probably easier, but if there's a particular MG that you like are really super into, then I don't think it's really too big of a deal for you to just go ahead and just get an MG to start with. It may not come out to be like your best build ever, but I don't know if you really like it. Uh, there's also two different options for um, this kind of computer screen bit here on the inside of this. I'm not really sure exactly what the difference is. One is using a polycap, and the other one's not using a polycap. So the one that's not using a polycap, I don't know, maybe uh, does not allow the cockpit to open. Maybe? I'm not sure. But let's see. PC2E. So we got a handful of polycaps with this kit. Uh, but yes, uh, I've been out of town, as you guys know, for a little while. I was in Chile, and it was a very good time. If you guys saw my video the other day, I talked a little bit about that. And uh, looking forward to hopefully being able to go again. So if any of you guys are in that area and didn't go this time for whatever reason, but would like to go next year, they've already uh, got the date set for next year and they're gonna have that so uh, around the same time I know but I don't know if I meant to say what the date is maybe they're gonna reveal that later on I don't know if I'm supposed to say that publicly yet but uh, around the same time next year anyway uh, I'm gonna go for the type of this using the polycap and uh, because we'll see what that's like but yeah there's another option for this here that's just using uh, just a different part so I'm not exactly sure what the difference is going to be but we'll find out here in a moment uh, I don't know it doesn't really look like mmm mm. what
Well, ah, okay. It looks like the polycap is for the cockpit piece. Let's see. Is this right? Yeah, it looks right. Is it? No. Let's see. Ah. Uh, is for specifically, it looks like it's specifically for the cockpit hatch, uh, which is the pre-painted one. That one has a different connector connection than the other two, which is strange. Oh, uh, yes. Very odd. So the connection on each of the different uh, um, canopies is, is slightly different. Interesting. All right. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get this part put together. And I got the chair in here. Alright. Like that. And our pilot sitting in the chair. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put that in later very easily. So I'll just put it in now for the time being. And close this up here. So yeah, the, the head honestly seems like just from preparing the parts uh, yesterday like during the weekend for this, the head seems like this the most complicated part of the build. The rest of it seems pretty simple in terms of its construction. So uh, the head is not exactly complicated, but it just has like a, a handful of little pieces and kind of option pieces here. So you'll have some choices there with that. And then you have these little bits here on the side, which I forgot to put in a polycap here. So yes. All right. Uh, let's see. What are you guys working on these days? Uh, yeah, this this month is going to be a very busy month. <laughs> we got the FAS coming out. Uh, what's the date today? Today's the 10th, so the FAS is coming out uh, end of this week. And then at the end of the month, we have the PG Strike coming out. So it's going to be a busy month. It's two big kits. And then there's a handful of other kits coming out as well, too. So there's a good amount of stuff coming out this month. And uh, the plan later today, uh, after this, is recording a new news video. So we'll talk about all the, there's a bunch of stuff announced last week. So there's a lot of things to talk about uh, as far as news stuff. So uh, after this, will probably be lunchtime for me. So I'll have some lunch and then... Uh, record and edit and upload the news video for this week because that'll be on the USA Gundam TV channel. You guys can check that out. I'll talk about all the new stuff that was announced. It's a lot of cool new stuff announced. Good amount of new build divers things as well. Uh, And of course, the new uh, RG Ava announcement. So when the Ava 1 was announced, we were all kind of guessing that we would probably see more RG Ava, whether it was going to be P Bandai or not. But it looks like at least for the Ava 0, it's not going to be P Bandai. It's just going to be a regular release as well, which is nice. But like with the Ava 01, uh, Unit 0 is also going to have two different versions of that available. But I much prefer. I think I said this when, when we talked about this before, when Zero One one was announced, uh, that it's cool that the like this the deluxe edition or whatever you want to call it, this the more expensive version comes with the uh, the hanger thing for it, which is cool, but I kinda would have preferred like some other weapons or something. It seems like Bandai was listening and heard me and uh, so for Unit 1, or Unit 0, the more expensive version is coming with the uh, with the sniper rifle, which is cool. 
So that's pretty awesome. So if and when we get the uh, unit two as well, which obviously is just a matter of time until that comes out. Uh, whenever we get the unit two in, I'm wondering what that will come with, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, there's a couple other parts here for the head, this red bar at the back. I'll go ahead and put this on now, but for the antenna, I'm going to wait and put that on later just for uh, while I'm assembling the kit. I don't want to actually accidentally break the antenna or something, so uh, I guess I can just have it on there. I'm just going to have to be careful with that. So there's the head. It's very cool. I like just the, the vents and everything on that, the camera. All the details around the head are really interesting. So that looks pretty cool. A little bit of a seam line there at the back. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So we have our different option canopy parts here, which are just going to be like that. So yeah, it looks like, ah, uh, uh, okay. With this other option part here for the canopy, it looks like uh, it's it'd be like fixed open like that. Uh, so it just, yeah, it's just not articulated. The one with the, when you've got the poly cap in there, this one you can actually articulate that and you can open that up like that. But the other one would just not be articulated. So that's your other option for those. Okay, so let's move on. Bye, Adam. Uh, you guys, you guys are, I didn't see Adam's message, but you guys are all saying goodbye to Adam. So I guess Adam said he is leaving. Bye, Adam. See you later. Talk to you later. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier, actually. What was it that you said? <laughs> Let me see. Uh, ah, yes. Um, Adam, if you're still there, if you haven't left yet, I'll get back to you about what we were talking about. And well, obviously, I was busy getting ready for the stream and getting my kids breakfast and everything. The morning's pretty hectic. Getting the kids up, dressed, fed, and out the door in the morning. You guys know how it is. Alright, so torso next. And we actually have two different options for the backpack for this. So we'll build both of those. It's like the main thing of this kit is the anti-aircraft backpack, but you actually have two different versions. So we got some poly cap here in the base of this. All right, like that. I'm going to try to pay attention to the manual and not leave anything out. Uh, and this poly cap not wanting to fit quite in there. Yeah. Mm. The poly caps seem I don't know what to compare this to but they're the kind of poly caps that are like not super perfect so they can be a little bit of a pain this seems like so far so you kind of have to be a little bit patient with the poly caps, it seems like. Uh, G is this one. Yes, uh, over the, this past weekend, I was seeing on Twitter all the all the Japanese people that I follow on Twitter all posting about uh, Wonderfest and feeling very sad that I wasn't at Wonderfest. But 
uh, I am hoping to go uh, in for a summer Wonderfest. So, fingers crossed, I'll be able to go for a summer Wonderfest uh, later this year, in the summer, obviously. Cause yeah, I was sad I couldn't go this time. Uh, but as I've heard uh, from different people, there's kind of pros and cons to going to either summer or winter Wonderfest. So uh, all things considered, it seems like maybe summer will be uh, the better bet anyway for me. But either way, I think it still would have been a cool experience. So I don't think that... Uh, let's see. I don't think that necessarily if I would have gone to Winter Wonderfest, I would have been disappointed or anything. Uh, did any of you guys go? I don't know if I knew of anyone like that I know personally who went. Actually, oh, well, I guess uh, one person. I know uh, uh, Alan McConaughey went. But I don't know if I've seen his uh, posting of his haul. Whatever he got there. Yeah, but I'm sure he bought plenty of stuff. So we also got this uh, um, tube, kind of like missile launcher kind of thing here, which plugs onto the uh, torso as well, which is, we actually put that together much later on in the construction near the end, but I've got it there now. So let's went ahead and put that together right away. Uh, and then this parts here for the chest. I love the red events in here. Uh, just the, like I said at the start, one of the things I think that uh, drew me to this particular Dugram design is that the color scheme is pretty cool. It's the uh, black and gray with the red accents. It's a pretty cool color scheme. Not something that I'm like normally like, typically into necessarily like for Gumpla or anything. But in this case, for this particular design, I thought it looked pretty cool. Uh, C two A and B. Uh, Brian, what's the size of this? Uh, it's one seventy second scale. But I think when it's all said and done, it's probably going to be about the size of like a small master grade. So probably about the size, uh, or like the general height. I mean, of like uh, like F91 Gundam, something like that. Let's be on this side. So yes, 170 second scale. Um, but so that should be larger than you know a 100 scale. Gundam, you would think, but in the Dugrams, I believe, are uh, much smaller. So, it's not going to be all that large. And as, you know, as we're getting into the construction, you should be able to start to get an idea of how big it's going to be. Here in a moment. Let's see. I'll make sure I didn't put that polycap there in backwards. All right. Um, what's this? Is that Gundam Military Generation? Maybe I bend. I I don't know about that. Uh, Lee, how's it going? I know Lee, you are the one that was probably most excited for this build. So ho hopefully, you're happy that I'm here building this one finally. You're the one that kept wanting to see it. Yes, finally building the Dugram. Now, I've got uh, I've got a bunch of stuff like in the to-do list and to as far as like reviews and stuff. Things that I need to get to. So what I've done is I've just uh, stacked them up and uh, I'm just going to make my way through them. You know, because like how I normally do it is just kind of like 
whatever I'm feeling like doing, I'll just get around to it, you know, like, as soon as I can, but like, I may not be feeling like I want to work on some specific kit or something, but I have a ton of things to get to, uh, so what I decided to do is just stack them up, and then just, just gonna go top to bottom, down, down the line, and get everything all done, so that it's all just done and out of the way. So, all right, so then we're gonna close up this torso here. So yes, the Dugram was near the top of the list because it's something that I've uh, had here for a little while, about a month or so, that I've been meaning to get to. Uh, and also, uh, let's see, 2D, all right, good. Uh, the next things, which is actually something that I already recorded the reviews and everything uh, over the weekend for, was another series of uh, Kotobuki MSG option weapons. So I think it was a, a couple months ago, sorry. Uh, I think it was a couple months ago, I think it was uh, during Frame Arms Month, around that time, uh, I did a few different videos, uh, review videos for some different MSG option weapons. Uh, and so I've got a few more of those. So I already re recorded the reviews and everything uh, for those over the weekend. So that's uh, aside from the news video, which I'll work on today as well. The other next few videos will be reviews of um, a few different MSG option weapons. So there we go. There's our head in body. You can see it's very sunken in there. It doesn't really have much of a neck, so just the head just kind of turns side to side, and that's about it. So that's pretty cool. And then this bit will plug onto where? Maybe somewhere on the backpack or something later on, so we'll just stick that off to the side for now. But there you go, you can see that's the torso and the head, so it's not really all that big. Uh, Blaze, I'm working on. They check the title of the video below. Or on the side, where is it? Below. Uh, DT Warrior, how's it going, buddy? Uh, all right. Uh, we're meant to build the arms next, but I kind of want to just put the waist together quickly first because it's only a couple parts here. That way our main body can be done. I know I said at the start that we were going to follow the manual, but we'll divert for a moment just to build the waist here. So the construction overall, so far, I mean, seems uh, similar to like a high grade gun, or uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I was gonna say sort of similar to like an old master grade, but even an older master grade uh, would have like some inner frame. This doesn't really have any inner frame at all, really. Uh, but the construction, aside from the lack of inner frame, does basically remind me of kind of an older Master Grade kit. It's pretty basic. And let's see. It's pretty basic, and uh, you know, the, the plastic quality definitely not as nice as like modern Bandai kits not that it feels like brittle or anything but there's just plenty of like flash not like uh, well no I don't mean that then there's a lot of flash but it's not as crisp and clean and perfect straight out of the box like Bandai's is this could definitely benefit from some sanding here and there just to clean up the edges a bit just to make it nice and pretty and everything So, I just want to make sure not to give you guys the wrong idea. There's nothing about it really so far that seems bad in any way. It's just not 
on the, it's definitely just not on the same level as the modern uh, Bandai Master Grade or anything like that, or, or even High Grade. Just in terms of that. But yeah, it is going to be pretty small. I was saying before that I think it's going to be like the size of a small Master Grade, but I think it's going to be even smaller than that. Uh, we'll take a look at some size comparisons once we've got it all together, but it's definitely not very large. Alright, so we're going to build the arms next then. Uh, and the arms also have a pretty unique construction to them with some interesting parts here. Uh, and they're also asymmetrical in that there's like a kind of beam gun or something. I don't know exactly what it's meant to be. Some sort of uh, gun weapon on the one arm. But he only has it on one arm, not on both. All right. Um, so, I mean, other things in the line. Oh, basically, I mean, like if you guys have seen the past... Uh, uh, the past delivery video that I just also just uploaded on uh, Saturday, then you should have a good idea about uh, what's coming down the line as far as uh, upcoming kits that are going to be built and reviewed and everything. So it's a good handful of stuff coming out in terms of my content, I mean. And pretty very mix as well. I've got a I got a Star Wars kit as well. I've got the what's the scale on that? I got the Y Wing Starfighter. It's the was it one hundred forty four scale, right? I think. Uh, sorry, I keep bumping the mic. I don't know if you guys are like, hearing that a bunch, but uh, so I have another Star Wars kit we're gonna take a look at, and yeah, a few of the Bandai uh, the HD Build Divers option sets got the uh, injustice injustice weapons still need to take a look at that i meant to review that like a week and a half two weeks ago or something two weeks ago uh, but i was busy at the time uh you're kind of worried it's still no restock of notching kits yes uh yeah the what i've heard as far as the restock of notching kits is that uh the company in Japan is just kind of slow to get the notch-in kits out. Because it seems like they also got, were a little overwhelmed. And I think, like, not only was USA Gundam Store waiting for a restock, but, like, kind of everywhere. Because they just kind of sold out everywhere all of a sudden. So, um, yeah, not much that we can do about that for the time being, uh, about the notching kits. Uh, the supplier, the, the company, is going to get them out as soon as they can, I think, but they were also a little bit surprised. <laughs> so, hopefully we'll get those for you guys as soon as possible. Uh, Jagan, thank you for your contribution. Uh as always, will you ever paint and exceed Gundam head like your Zaku head? I just finished disassembling my Gundam head, and while it requires a lot of modifications, it's not too bad. Um, yes, I I would do plan to. I have a couple of them. Uh, I bought a set of uh, there. What do I have? Uh, three or four of those. So yeah, I need to build uh, one of the Gundam heads. But yeah, just it's a bit annoying with the Gundam heads. Yeah, that you have to do a little bit more modification to actually take them apart uh, to prepare them for painting. Yes. Uh, that's a little bit annoying, but uh, yeah, I do plan to paint one of the Exceed Gundam heads. Yeah, surely. Also, the uh, the ball. If you guys remember from uh, my trip to Japan in December, I brought the uh, capsule ball kits as well. So I've got that one over here as well. That meaning to work on that. So yeah, that'll be something to work on in the nearish nearish future. Be working on that. Hmm. Uh, and Revan, how's the build so far? The build so far is about what I was expecting. 
uh, as I was just talking about it just a few minutes ago, it's not like uh, an amazing kit so far, but I wasn't really expecting it to be realistically, so. Uh, it's a very interesting kit. And that is just something different, something cool. It has a very cool look to it. So, that's fun. Um, PC one F. Let's see. So, I like that it's something different. But yeah. Uh, how? Let's see. How far along are you on the build? Oh, are you guys talking about the uh, Gundam head? That's, what's that? Huh, nice colors. Yes. Dad. <laughs> My dad texted me. Nice colors on the build. Yeah, it's an interesting, uh, interesting color scheme for this. Uh, Dogram, I think, like, Dugram or Votams, these kind of uh, things, you usually expect to, they're like a little bit more like realistic models, not so like super robot. I mean like just the designs. Not as uh, like super robot as Gundam or something, so you expect the, like, the colors to be not like really flashy or anything like that, but the colors for this are pretty interesting. Also doesn't seem like a super realistic color scheme. Black with red, right? But... Uh, it still looks pretty cool. Uh, in the manual, which I'll I'll show you guys here in a moment, but ugh. Yeah, polycap a little tight in there. In the manual, it shows you some alternate color schemes that you can use. Uh, oops, there we go. Let's see, and this one like this. Uh, here, I'll just show you quickly. And the back of the manual, so it's got the main color scheme there, and then down below it shows you alternate color schemes: gray, green, mahogany, dark green, and light gray. So honestly, I just kind of actually prefer the original color scheme for this. I don't know what colors ultimately I'll end up painting it in. Probably something different because. I just usually like to paint something different anyway. But the original color scheme in that like matte black, or, like satiny kind of frost black does look pretty cool. So I don't know. All right. Uh, and then we need a little more polycaps here. A and E. Mm. Everyone just recently got into Gumpla. I'm loving your channel. Zach, really helpful for a beginner like me. Uh, well, glad to hear that, that you're finding the channel helpful. If you're just getting into Gumpla, then this is probably not something that's been on your radar yet, but glad to introduce you to something a little different here with a kit like this. I'm not sure, I don't know, like, what kind of person would know about, like, Dugram before knowing about Gundam. I guess if there is someone who's, like, a, like, retro anime fan or something like that who's more familiar with some of this kind of stuff, maybe. Uh, all right, and let's see. Uh, use that kind of use USA code. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, the ten percent discount code at your second store you guys can use uh, infinitely, as many times as you like, as often as you like. It's not a one-time thing, no. Uh, your your husband Tony. Uh, Edith, your husband Tony loves my channel. Well, thank you, uh, to you for watching, and glad to hear that your husband that. Your husband also likes my channel. Yes. Tony Tony Senpai. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for the name. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't know if, uh, if he like typically comments or not. The, the name doesn't sound familiar, but uh, I'll keep an eye out. Are there any upcoming kits that you're looking forward to? Uh, well, as I just, at least if that question was meant for me, uh, Psycho Mantis. Any upcoming kits that I'm looking forward to? As I was just talking about just a few minutes ago, uh, I'm looking forward to the new Ava kit. The Ava Zero, or Zero Zero, whatever you want to call it, however you want to call it. Uh, the new Ava kit looks cool, and also, I'm actually really quite looking forward to the new Gundam kit, the Beyond Global. I mean, or the Arc 782, okay, I should say specifically. The original Gundam. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. It looks really cool, uh, just the construction, everything on that. It looks like it's going to be a really nice HG, because as you guys know, I really like the um, the Revive Gundam, the Revive Arc 782. And this looks like an even better version of that, like even a Revive Revive. So it looks great. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And what I'm thinking will be really cool, because uh, my G40, which I also need to film the like final review for that for you guys to show you the final result of the G40. But uh, the G40 I painted in the G3 colors, as you guys chose. Hopefully you guys voted on that and had the public poll for that. Uh, and then the... So that one's painted in, in G40 colors, or G, yeah, that one's painted in the G3 colors. Uh, and then for, I'm thinking to do the other two, we have the Origin HG and then the Beyond Global HG also coming out. So I'm thinking to paint each one in a different color scheme. So they'll be kind of like a cool set. So like we have the G40 was in G3 colors, and then we'll do like the Origin Gundam in like, um, real type colors and then the uh, and then the beyond global in like for example on uh, rollout colors or something like that so something like that we're doing each three of the kind of new there's like three now new versions of the arc 782 out and so just to paint each one up in a different custom color scheme I think would be pretty cool, and then have them like as a set. Be kind of a cool like celebration, like Gundam celebration, uh, for like the 40th anniversary. To have kind of all three new versions of the RX-78 all painted in different colors. What do you guys think about that idea? I know I was kind of str struggling to get through explaining that, but uh, this is the wrong side. Well, it sounds like a cool idea. Uh, between the Beyond Global and the Origin version, which are you most anticipating? Oh, between the two of those, I'm still, I think, looking forward to the Origin version more than the Beyond Global. Both of them look great though. I'm really looking forward to both, but I just prefer the uh, the Origin version. It's the same thing like with the Master Grade between the 3.0 and uh, the Origin version Master Grade. I prefer uh, the Origin version, but they're both really fantastic. So you can't really go wrong with either version. Uh, prototype color scheme, yeah, uh, Lee. That's another option, prototype colors or rollout colors, one of those. Or it can just go with just something like not an established color scheme with just something totally new and custom. 
So I don't know exactly yet, but uh, I think probably the real type color scheme will probably look best on the uh, the Origin Gundam. So probably go with that. Real type colors for the Origin Gundam and then for the Beyond Global, I don't know. Because it's like Beyond Global and just like just to go with the name and just the general idea of the kit, I think maybe just doing something entirely custom would be cool. Not doing as like prototype or rollout or anything like that, but just something completely original. I think could also be pretty cool. Oh, uh, the Windham kit? Yeah, I'm also, uh, Jeremy, to answer your question. Yeah, I'm also quite looking forward to the Windham kit as well, actually. In the new images that we got of the Windham kit, uh, the construction actually looks quite interesting. Uh, it looks very similar to the Leo. So it definitely, I mean, you can definitely see that they're releasing that as a part of, like, the uh, grunt. Uh, what do I want to say? Uh, like their series of uh, alternate universe grunt releases. So like with the uh, the Leo, the Magunak, and the Death Army. So you can definitely see the Wyndham is a continuation of that, just based on the construction of it. So it looks cool. And the overall design, I'm not like super into the overall design, but I think the parts like separately broken down I think will make really good kit bash parts so it's probably a kit that ultimately I'll just use for kit bashing but uh, I don't know the overall I mean it's not it's not bad it's got some cool proportions to it I like that it's got some like pretty chunky proportions to it uh, so it's got a cool look to it definitely among like if you were to, were to come and ask me like beforehand like all right we're gonna the next uh, Grunt HG is going to be from Seed or Seed Destiny. Uh, probably I would have cho I would have chosen uh, the Jin. Would have been my f my first instinct. I would not have thought of the, the Jet Windham uh, because it's just uh, not really a memorable design for me, honestly. Like I've watched Seed Destiny once, ages ago, but I don't really re remember it that well. So it wouldn't have come to mind. But I'm glad they went with it because it did. It does look pretty cool. Uh, I like it better than some of the other designs that I do remember. That said, I do hope that we do get a new kit of the uh, of the Jin at some point, and it's got a bunch of different variants. So I think that would be a really good candidate for a master grade kit because they can make loads of variants out of that. And this part is not wanting to go in here. For like the shoulder armor here, you put like the shoulder armor around the the main shoulder piece and then you got like these parts that fit in the side which are like pins basically which hold that onto there and this one is just not wanting to fit in there quite right it's and it's just because of a little bit of flash around the edge so it needs to fit into that hole but if I can just get it in there well enough and push that with something a little bit harder than my thumb. There we go. Uh, uh, what about the Marcosius Gundam HG? Honestly, not really that excited about that. It's not really something I'm really into. Uh, I don't really, at this point, I don't even plan on, on reviewing that. Okay. Unless something changes my mind, but... For the time being, I don't plan on uh, reviewing the Marcosius Gundam. I'm not the biggest Ironblood Orphans fan, and I think a lot of people, you guys probably already know that. Uh, but that's not the reason why I'm not super into that design. I mean, if it was a cool design, I'd be for, all for it, but... Uh, so it's not because it's... Iron Blood Orphans is just because I'm not really all that into the design. It's a it's very extra. It's got a lot of stuff going on. Very hectic design, which I think fits well enough with the whole Iron Blood Orphans theme, kind of. Uh, but 
it's not really for me. So I'm I'm sure it's going to be a solid HG, as pretty much all of the Iron Blood Orphans kits are, especially the Gundam types. <clears throat> They're all <clears throat> pretty standard. All basically have this exact same pros and cons. Uh, really nice articulation, nice details, um, but then they tend to be a little bit sticker heavy, and have like they usually all have a couple of nasty seam lines on them. Uh, and so, pretty much the that same list of pros and cons applies to pretty much all the Gundam types, pretty standardly. So you can pretty much guess what you're gonna get with any of them. Uh, and they also, but I guess this is one thing that I think that maybe is a little bit different about this one is that uh, uh, a lot of them, well, I guess the, you know, there's a mix. Some of them have a lot more weapons than others. We have like the Barbatos Lupus, like it only has just the one weapon. That's pretty much it. Uh, but then you have like the Bale was also pretty limited. It just has like the two swords, very simple. Then you have something like uh, the Vidar, which had a, a few different weapons and gimmicks and things. So... Uh, the Marcosi is definitely going to be one of the ones more similar to the Bale in that uh, it has a little bit more going on in terms of its weapons and gimmicks and all that with the all the different swords and everything that it's got going on. So That's definitely going to give you pretty good bang for your buck, I think, in that sense. You've got kind of a, a lot to work with there. All right. We got this little piece there for at the wrist. There we go. So this is like the little uh, beam gun sort of thing. Very similar, very similar in a way to what was on like the forearm of the Mecha Godzilla, which we recently built. Had a similar kind of thing on its forearm too, right? A little beam gun there. So that's pretty cool. And then we've got a bunch of different hands. Ah, oh, and then the these little bits here for the forearm guard. Uh, what do you think about the Thunderbolt kits? Uh, Thunderbolt kits also, it's just kind of uh, generally the same list of pros and cons for those if you're talking about just like the HG kits. Again, uh, cool details and cool weapons. A lot of them, they all tend to be pretty weapon heavy. Uh, but also, seam line heavy and sticker heavy. So, you have some pros and cons there. For this, uh, all right. The hand guards are also different on this between the left and the right. The armor piece on the back of the hand. On the left hand, it has this little bit of detail on there, which I'm guessing is also some sort of other weapon or or something. There for that. And the right side doesn't have that at all. But, alternatively, the right side has the gun on the forearm. So, uh, let's see, you have this little bit it's meant to fit on top of there, like that. And that fits into there, like that. Okay. Uh, and I don't know about... I'd have to look at some of the other Dugram kits, but do any of them come with, uh, like, with some sort of a melee weapon, like a sword or something like that? I don't know offhand, but if you guys know, I can't remember. But I kind of wish that this would have come with like uh, some sort of melee weapon. Would have been cool just to to have. Uh, but there's different hand options. So we have closed fists two open hands, and then you have this holding hand here, which is, um, there's nothing really to hold with that, so that's just kind of there. Uh, but there's that. Now we can build the legs, and then the backpack. Uh, hey Zach, I saw your video on the package I sent. Ah, Julius, I'm glad I had some things you didn't have. Yeah, Julius, thank you very much uh, for the package. Yeah, all that stuff I didn't have, uh, so it was cool. And it, I, the, uh, the little mini kit of the Zaku, um, even if that would have been a graze, which I already have, I wouldn't have minded that. So it's cool that it's a Zaku too. Uh, that was a good uh, fit, actually. 
like I said, uh, I mentioned in the video, uh, that would have been, I think, if, you know, I, I mentioned the video, I said, like, uh, I hope it's uh, Neo Zeong. But aside from the Neo Zeong, you know, Zaku 2 would have been uh, high on my list. Let me see here. I just want to adjust this because I'm just now kind of noticing that it's maybe a little dark for you guys. So I'll just turn up the gain a little bit because we're dealing with black parts. So I don't want it to be too dark for you guys to not be able to see what's going on. All right. Uh, the legs. A lot of times on like Gundam kits, the legs usually tend to be one of the more complicated parts because you have a good amount of parts going on them. But the legs, I mean, in this case, not really that much. It's not really too much different from the arms, really. Uh, so we got C and H. Okay. a handful of polycaps. Alright, like that. Okay, and our foot piece here. Uh, John, thanks for mentioning Beyond Global. I just pre-ordered that from USA Gun Store. Already had the Origin version pre-ordered. Yeah. yeah, Beyond Global. I'm looking forward to that. It looks really nice, and I like that. Uh, I like that. It looks like similar to the G40 in that they went a similar route in tr like trying to make it super articulated, but they didn't make it articulated in all the exact same ways as the G40. So like if they would have taken the G40 and, you know, used all the same uh, engineering for that, but just changed the outer look to not be the Ken Okoyama design, uh, then I'm not sure how into that I would have been because... Well, the G40 has some cool points of articulation. I'm not really too uh, into those, to some of them. So I'm glad that they that they went the similar route and making it super articulated, but they did it in a different way. So it looks cool. Uh, what scale was it again? This one, Blaze. This is 172 scale. 172nd. So yeah, it's kind of between uh, MG and PG in terms of comparing it to the scale of Gumpla anyway. But the general size is going to be more like between HG and MG. I think as you guys can probably already sort of start to see, but you'll see here, I'll give you a look at some a couple of size comparisons once we've got it all built up, and then obviously in the review as well, show you some size comparisons as well, but uh, as you'll see here, it's not that large. Let's see, H. It's actually slightly smaller than I was expecting, even. But it's okay. It's all good. Uh, let's see. This part here, that's gonna go in here. This is the ankle joint now. In the leg. Mm. Uh, is Yellow Submarine the place where you can buy individual parts from different gum ganola kits? <laughs> yes, uh, Yellow Submarine, yes, is the place where you can buy uh, not exactly individual parts, it's like, yeah, parts of runners, parts of kits separated on the runners. And why is this not fitting into there? 
Mm, I'm guessing I'm putting this in the wrong place. Maybe it's meant to go here, actually. Right. Okay. Uh, yellow submarine and oh, where's the other place? There's another place too, where you can buy parts. Um, where was that? Sudagaya? No. Yes. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, a place that I didn't really know that you could buy parts from, or it's like a new thing. They just recently started. I think it's Sudagaya. Well, I, I don't remember offhand now. Was that soon? Where was that? I was just there in December. I noticed that. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Not Surigai. It was uh, the other place. Uh, what's the name of it? It was not good, though. It was expensive. And at Yellow Submarine, too, it's really expensive. Uh, buying the individual, like, just like the spare parts, the spare runners and stuff that you can get at Yellow Submarine, uh, it's expensive. It's not really worth it, in my opinion, unless it's like a really specific part that you really need for a kit and you really don't want to buy the whole kit then go for it but otherwise I mean like it'd be for example like just for the let's say just for example the I don't know what would be a good example um the Destiny Gundam let's say for example it's just the backpack of the Destiny Gundam is gonna be like a thousand yen uh, but like the full kit you can buy for like 1600 yen so you're paying more than half of the price of the full kit and in that case you're probably just gonna wanna go for just buying the full kit and then just taking the backpack and then you have the rest of the kit you can just use for some other kit bash or something later but if you really don't like if you feel like well that's really gonna be a waste to just uh, buy the full kit and then I have and then having a, you know a bunch of the, the majority of the kit that you're not going to use aside from the backpack and then just having that left over and you're not don't have any plan or anything you want to do with that and really all you really need is the backpack then yeah I guess save yourself 600 yen and just get the backpack but it just seems uh, overpriced for what it is. I mean, like, realistically, they should just break it down to, like, okay, the backpack constitutes, you know, how much of the full kit, 20, 30% maybe, so make it the price of it as, like, 30% of the price of the full kit. Something like that. Seems like that would be the way that would make sense to me of how that should work. But, yeah. I don't know. It's I mean if you I mean just go and look around, you know, you might come across something that is uh is pretty cool. Some particular weapon or a particular part of a kit that is maybe like exactly what you were looking for for something. So it's worth a look if you have time, but especially if you only have like a day in Akihabara. You know, I wouldn't spend like three hours just looking through all the spare parts at Yellow Submarine. I mean, the chances that you're going to find like a really good deal are not like that good. Is Yellow Submarine on that map that you made for you as a gun store? Yes, uh, it's on the map. It's very easy to find, too. Uh, just right outside... It's it's like the nearest place to Akihabara Station, so if you go to Akihabara Station, just out the, the, the it's like the back exit, but it's like the south uh, southwest southwest exit out of Akihabara Station. Um, there's a big building there. It's Radio Kaikan, and Yellow Submarine's on the fifth or sixth floor. There, it's easy enough to find. Uh, Let's see H and B, but yes, it's it's on the map. It's in the guide. It hasn't changed anything since the guide. I need to finish. There's a couple updates I need to make to the guide, but uh, not for Yellow Submarine. It hasn't changed at all.
and there's a part that should be here, which is not, which means, oh, here it is. Uh, all right. Uh, this one, go in here. All right. So as you can see, the leg and <laughs> it's pretty small there. Uh, not only is this kit, as you guys can see, just generally not that large, but also the proportions are quite different. It doesn't ha like the legs are pretty sh like kind of short and stumpy, and like the same thing for the body. Get in there. Uh, Anthony, thank you. I will enjoy finishing the build here. And goodbye. Yeah, definitely the most tricky part of this build is just the polycaps. Some of the polycaps just don't really want to fit in very well. And it's a little bit troublesome. But you just, like I said before, just need to be a little bit patient with them. Ouch. <laughs> it is causing a little bit of polycap thumb pain, though. Um, no, we'll get that here in a minute. So, anyway, uh, that is like that, and then this one here. Let's see, and here. Anyone here plays Battle Operation 2? Yeah, any of you guys play Battle Operation 2? I'm assuming many of you probably do. I don't, because I don't have a PlayStation. But I do play the mobile game. I know I haven't made any mobile game content. I would like to do like a project where I make you know, in the, in the real world, make a custom build based on like the unit, like my custom build that I use in the game. I would like to do that, I just kind of don't really have the time. So I have other projects and things I'm working on that are going on, so don't really have enough time to do that, unfortunately, I would like to. Uh, all right, so the knee is pretty simple there. It seems like it's sort of like a double joint and the knee kind of in theory, but it really only has one point of articulation essentially. So there you go. You guys can see the general size there of this now kind of with the legs. So you can see the legs pretty short. One more leg. Let's build those backpacks. The backpacks, while well, we have two backpacks, they're relatively simple. Really only like a handful of parts for each of those. I love the little red uh, bar bits here on the front and back of the legs and back of the head. It's cool detail on these. So that goes into there. And this one into here like that and the bottom of the foot let's see 
Let me check this. Uh huh. Ah, uh -huh. I'm just now noticing now that we're over an hour into the stream that the stream has not been working on Twitch. So I was wondering why no one's commenting anymore on Twitch. Uh, yeah, because it's not working on Twitch, is it? So sorry about that, guys. I didn't realize that. I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. Let's see. Hmm. Let me just check. Hmm. Uh, it says, according to uh, Restream here, it says that it's it's feeding data to Twitch, so it seems like it's a Twitch issue. Uh, but let's see here. Uh, I wonder why it's not working. Something. Hmm. Uh, yeah, as you guys are mentioning in the chat. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, okay, I don't know what the deal is. Uh, error 2000, whatever that is. But, uh, yeah. So, Twitch not working today, but, uh, anyway, you guys are at least able to watch it there on YouTube and Facebook anyway, so that should be enough. Mm. All right. Yeah, I know restream can be finicky, but it doesn't seem like it's an issue with that. Uh, we'll see. If Twitch is not working again next time, then... I'll try, I'll, I'll see what it is, but it seems like it just maybe, I don't know, whatever happened, just happened today and doesn't necessarily seem like it's going to be a constant issue, but at least from just uh, looking at it for a moment, but we'll see. H here. So Ingram does have the weird aura plastic. That's the other thing that I need to build is uh, an Ingram kit. I have the Bandai uh, MG Ingram kit. That's the Pat Labor, like the next generation one or whatever. The much more detailed version of that one. I've had that kit for ages. I need to get around to building that. that would also be something cool to take a look at because it's also just something different. See that there. And then what was the next part of that? This part here at the top. This part here. And... So yeah, I can just say that just in general, this kit would be, is going to be so much better once you really take the time to just clean up the parts really well and just get everything fitting super nicely. Just straight out of the box, you have little bits that just are not going to fit like quite perfectly and everything. So it's a kit that I think will definitely benefit from giving it a little bit of love. But I think, uh, you know, that shouldn't surprise me if you knew you're getting yourself into with a uh, Plumax kit like this. They're not, it's not Bandai. They're not really meant necessarily to be. I mean, they're everything's color accurate. I mean, as best as it's going to be, but 
it uh, they're definitely meant more for modeling than just like snap building H and B Oh, Amos said, I know neither of these are possible, but you should have done a Rosen Zulu contest for V Day or finish your Rosen Zulu conversion for V Day. Just some ideas. Make sure. Yeah, uh, Rosen Zulu, something Rosen Zulu for Valentine's Day. Yeah, probably would have been a good idea. Yeah, obviously didn't really think about that. And yes, it's a bit late uh, for either of those to necessarily be uh, possible at this time, but something to think about. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't have thought at all about doing something special for Valentine's Day anyway. So, yeah, something to think about. Yeah, get in there. This this one especially is a tricky polycap to go on in here for the knee joint. Uh, are you going to build a buku? Uh, I don't plan to. I'm not really a big fan of the design. Uh, and Terry T, are you talking to me? Am I going to paint this kit? I, I don't plan if you're if you are talking to me, Terry. <laughs> uh, to answer you, I don't have uh, plans to paint this up straight away, so this will go just back into the kind of deep queue of waiting for painting. Uh, yeah. Uh, DT where your wife got home. Well, enjoy the evening with your wife, and we'll catch you later. Come on. Uh, I could just trim this pollen cap a little bit, but I'm trying to. I want to just try to get to fit in there if I can first before resorting to trimming the poly cap because don't want to loosen it. But this is just. Pissing me off now, so. Let's try this again. Ah, oh, yes, you're talking to me, Terry. Okay, yes, uh, yeah. To answer your question, no, I don't have plans to paint this straight away, but you know, eventually, right? So, um. yeah, oh, fucking hell, dude. Okay. Hopefully that is in there enough. You can kind of force it the rest of the way. Yes. Oh. Well, enough for the time being anyway. God damn. Nasty polycap there. Uh, have you found a good deal on a Bandai 172nd scale VF25 kit yet? Uh, which one is that? I don't know what that is. Is that the one that I said I wanted? 
uh, I don't know its number. Uh, but yes, the macros kit that I maybe have mentioned before was another one that I wanted. It was the uh, the Messiah with all the missile pods and everything on it. Is that the VF-25? I don't know. But uh, if it is, no, I have not found a good deal on one. I haven't bought one. I mean, just the the price of the kit is not necessarily what's holding me back from getting one, but you know, finding one f for a good price, you know, would always be ideal, of course, sure. Uh, but alright, there's the main body. And he's very funny. And before we get the backpack put on, I'll give you guys a little size comparison. Oof. Uh, yes, the VF-25 is a Messiah. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, I, yeah, that's the other Macross kit that I'm wanting to get is, yeah, the Messiah with all the missile pods and everything, and no, I have not got one yet. Uh, so just for a comparison, here he is compared with a Gundam, with an HG, anyway, to be specific. So with an HG, you can see it's uh, slightly taller, but not by much. It's going to be pretty close in terms of, like, the general height, anyway. It's obviously a bit bulky, a bit chunkier than a Gundam here, so, but you can see it's going to be kind of similar. It is the Messiah Super Armor the Custom, yeah. yeah, 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 no, I've not got one yet. All right, uh, and let's see, I think uh, someone else uh, posted something, uh, Unwound Attic said, what box do you use to hold and separate the pieces? Uh, this this thing here is just uh, used, it's used for like jewelry making or all sorts of things people use these for. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of these that I use for just organizing parts for snap building kits. Simple. Uh, yeah. Uh, backpack time. Last but not least. Uh, and we have one more poly cap I'm going to use here. So as I mentioned before, there's two backpack options for this. One is the turbo sack, and the other one is the armed anti-aircraft type sack. Uh, they're actually both pretty cool. Just the regular turbo sack also has a very large cannon on it, but it's just one instead of the two. So we've got just the main cannon here, which is not very hefty, but it's quite long. And we've got a nice, big, long seam line all the way down the length of that, so that's cool. And this little bit here at the end. Like that. So that main cannon itself is like almost as tall as the entire kit. Let's see, we got main piece for the buddy yeah there was uh, one thing that was cool to see there in uh, Chile last week was th there was uh, some pretty cool and just the guys there in general there was a lot more interest in Macross, really, than I would have expected. So there were some pretty cool Macross builds there, and just kind of generally people more interested in Macross than I was expecting. So it's kind of had uh, Macross on my mind a little bit more than usual. 
So yeah, I've been giving it a little bit more thought lately. These bits go up into here. Um, right. Yes. Should be like that. Or right, not fitting in there. Hmm. There we go. This red bit's at the bottom of the backpack. And then we also have this part here at the top. And this part over the top of that. Uh, Asadul, what are some good HG kits? <laughs> As this question was asked earlier, uh, the same response is just that you're going to have to be a little bit more specific as to what you're looking for for HG kits because it's too hard to just narrow that down. If you're looking for like a good HGUC kit or a good HG kit from Iron Blood Orphans or a good HG kit from any particular series or something it would be easier to to give you an answer for that. I love the look of this backpack though, like these little like exhaust vents on there and you have this little cable part here which goes on there so it's got some really cool nice details around in the backpack uh, and uh, this part over here this side and this one here and this one here And this part at the top here. And this one here. Right? Ah, no, other way. Here and here. Okay. And then the gun attached onto the side here. Like that, there you go. So that's pretty cool. And we'll just fit onto the back like that. There you go. Where does this plug on here though? Huh? Ah, it's meant to plug into the side of the head. Okay. Yes, I see. Uh, on this side of the head, this part here, you can swap out for this one if you want. But it, if you're using this backpack, it's not going to work because this uh, hose bit here is going to be in the way. So it depends on which backpack you're using. But that is the turbo sack, which is just this here with this big cannon on the top of that, which is pretty cool. I will say, like, uh, as a. Uh, as some of the construction was a little bit iffy feeling when putting it together over like the feeling once it's all put together it feels quite solid actually it's a very solid feeling kit once it's all put together so yeah, it feels very good actually like I can shake it around nothing's gonna fall off or anything on it so that's pretty cool alright then we have of course the anti-aircraft sack as well so let's just get that built and call it a day uh brandon asks what's your favorite model uh, i don't really have a favorite model i can't really answer that my favorite gundam anime uh destroyer my favorite gundam anime would be either uh eighth ms team Turn A or Unicorn Gundam. 
be my favorites. Uh, and then we got the cannon parts like this and part on the back of there like that and the other one now these cannons as well also pretty long. I was thinking that the turbo sack one was longer, but it's actually about the same, actually. It's only slightly longer than these are, actually, in the anti-aircraft guns. It's not actually that much different. Uh, this backpack, obviously very different in color, though, and very, I think, inaccurate in the color. As you can see in the manual, this backpack is supposed to be like also very dark gray, almost black, and it's in light gray. And the parts that are meant to be blue are also in light gray. So not really very color accurate, straight out the box. If that's a concern for you. Uh, let's see, we need a couple more of these polycaps here, it looks like. The last couple of polycaps we're gonna need or polycap A, which we've got two of here. Those go into here. Things. Which IBO HG would you guys consider worth buying? Uh, among the IBO HG kits, there's a lot of really good ones. So, uh, I would recommend the Grays. It's a really good one, just for it's it's very simple, but really nice. Uh, any particular version of the Grays, really. Uh, that said, the. Uh, What's the kind of teal colored one? Uh, the shoulder parts for that one. What is it? Uh, it Carter's Gray's Ritter, I think, right? The shoulder parts for that one were a little bit tricky and that they, they tend to like uh, fall apart kind of easily. So like you probably will want to do, we'll want to put some glue or something on those just to make them a little bit more solid. Uh, but other than that, I mean, uh, the Grimgird was also a good HGIBO kit. And I don't know maybe uh, how long you've been watching the stream, but I talked about this a little bit earlier in the stream, but uh, for the Gundam types, they're all kind of pretty similar in their pros and cons, so really kind of any of them just kind of depends on whatever, whatever design you like. Oh, there's the alternate backpack. I think definitely the, the turbo sack, uh, definitely just straight out of the box, looks better just because it has nice nicer colors on it. Uh, but the anti-aircraft sack also, of course, looking pretty cool there. Some nice details on that. So just to give you guys a look, it's pretty easy to swap the backpacks out here. Just a single connection there on the back. And the backpacks are light enough. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any problem with like that falling off the back of the kit or something like that, but so there's that. It looks pretty cool. So yeah, it's about what I was expecting. Uh, it's got plenty of seam lines around on the kit uh, and definitely is going to need it's a little bit of work just to get it, you know, feeling really good, but it's actually quite solid. The color separation is were pretty cool. The different colors of like gray and really dark gray everything on there so it looks pretty cool pretty happy with the kit what do you guys think if you have any of the last questions or anything shout them out otherwise we're going to wrap up the stream and like i said this afternoon work on a new uh news video for you guys that will be on the usa gundam tv channel and then uh got some M kodobuki msg option weapon reviews my g40 final review to share with you guys, and then uh, the review for this guy, of course, obviously. Uh, but if you've been watching the stream, you kind of 
maybe don't really need to watch the review. I've had a good live review, sort of, of the whole thing for the most part. Uh, but that's going to be pretty much it for now. Yes, Dugram Cannon. Indeed. All right, so uh, that, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you guys next time. As for the next live stream, uh, Jeremy, yes, I am going to buy the Wyndham. Yes, to answer your question. Uh, the next live stream build will maybe be... Uh, hmm. uh, maybe the HG Destiny Gundam. It's not new. It's been out for a little while, but as you guys know, I didn't get it straight away. I got it much later on, but uh, I need to build it anyway. So, ah, uh, that or... Uh, no, actually, maybe the either the HG Destiny or the uh, MG Marasai. Also not a new kit at all, but I got that for my GBWC project, which I need to get started on. So uh, one of the two of those will be in the next live stream later this week. So I'll let you guys know about that. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Bye, guys. Have a good one.